Imagine, if you will, 30 geometric points. Now, taken at face value, there are an infinite number of ways to arrange them. But since neither you nor I want to spend literally the rest of our lives exploring those options, let's limit our imaginings. So imagine 30 geometric points on a plane, equal distance and evenly spaced around a fixed center. It would look and sound like this. If we were to interconnect these points, once again, we have an infinite number of ways to do so. But if we limit ourselves to connections that are systematic, and only use line segments whose endpoints are a given 30, our results are interesting, and to my eyes and ears, quite beautiful. If we connect each point to its nearest neighbor, we will produce a 30-sided shape, or a triacontagon. It looks and sounds like this. If we skip one point, which is to say, draw a line not to a point's nearest neighbor, but the one on the other side of it, after one revolution, we will end up back at our starting point, and will have produced a 15-sided shape, or a pentadecagon. It looks and sounds like this. You probably noticed that this shape only occupies half of our points. In order to use the remainder, we'll need to draw another pentadecagon. To sum up, skipping one point produces two pentadecagons. If we skip two points, we end up back at our starting place after one revolution, and in the process, we'll have drawn and heard a ten-sided shape, or a decagon. To use all our points, we'll need to draw a total of three. It looks and sounds like so. If we skip three points, an interesting thing happens. After one revolution, we won't land on the point at which we started. We'll need to follow the pattern round again in order to land there, and in so doing, we'll be constantly crossing over the lines we drew the first time. This process takes us away from the world of polygons, and into the world of polygrams, or stars. To skip three points is to draw a fifteen-pointed star, or a pentadecagram, like so.
and just like the pentadecagon, you'll notice that we only occupied half of our points. To finish, we'll need to draw an identical star. So skipping three points makes two pentadecagrams. If we skip four points, we return to polygons, and we'll create a six-sided shape, or a hexagon. To use all our points, we'll need to draw a total of five. They look and sound like this. If we skip five points, we will draw on here six pentagons, or shapes with five sides. If we skip six points, one revolution won't land us back where we started. We'll in fact need to make six revolutions, and in the process we'll create our first 30-pointed star, or triacontogram. It looks and sounds like so. If we skip seven points, we'll produce two pentadecagrams, If we skip eight points, we'll make our first ten-pointed star, or decagram, and we'll need to make three of them.
If we skip 9 points, we'll return to a much simpler shape. We'll draw on here 10 triangles, like so. Skipping 10 points makes another trichontogram. Eleven points produces six pentagrams or five pointed stars. Skipping 12 points, we'll draw on and tone another trichontogram. and skipping 13 points makes two pentadecagrams. Our next drawing slash sounding will take us out of the world of both polygons and polygrams. If we skip 14 points, we'll find ourselves directly opposite from where we started. Connecting the points this way will produce a line segment, too simple to be a shape at all. To fill all our points, we'll make 15 of them, and they look and sound like this.
At this point, and yes, the pun was intended, we reach the halfway mark of the composition. For if we skip 15 points in a clockwise manner, we are essentially skipping 13 points counterclockwise. We will draw slash here the most recent pentadecagram, only the points and pitches will be presented in practically the reverse order. It looks and sounds like this. If I may, I'd like to describe some of the things I enjoy about this piece. These aren't necessarily the things you should be enjoying, or the things you should be observing as you listen. What goes on between your two ears is entirely your business. I like how a facsimile of a circle gets formed by the lines crossing inside the points. It started out as a big circle, shrank with each section, disappeared at the halfway mark, and now is expanding outward as the piece continues. It gives the work a nice symmetry. Yet, not all aspects of the work are symmetrical. I'm not saying the words I said earlier, let alone in reverse order, or completely reversing the sound. Each section begins at the same point and on the same pitch, so it's impossible to be a complete retrograde. You probably noticed the relationship between the types of shapes produced, and how many we need to make. Since we only have 30 points, and they need to be evenly distributed amongst all the shapes we draw, we can divide 30 by how many angles a shape has, or points a star has, and that will tell you how many of those shapes are needed.
you may or may not have started thinking about why certain skippings become polygons and others polygrams. I'm going to elaborate on this, but let me advise that when doing these calculations, include the point on which we land, not just how many we skip. Saying that a different way, in the next section we skip 20 points, but think of it as moving to the 21st point away, and calculate with the number 21. I found this number variation makes the math much easier. The system we're working within has 30 points. If we think of 30 as a composite number, and describe it by its prime factorization, well, for you non-mathy people, that's a fancy way of saying which prime numbers multiply into 30, and how many of each number there are. We know that 30 is the product of 2, 3, and 5. In fact, that's why the composer chose this numeric system, instead of arbitrarily choosing another one. In the next section, we'll essentially be skipping 6 points, which means moving to the 7th point away. Let us compare 7, which is a prime number itself, with the prime factorization of our system. The two camps share no values. Because of this, 7 is completely out of synchronization with 30, and will produce a polygram that uses all 30 points. Skipping 5 points means moving to the 6th point away. The factors of 6 are 2 and 3. When we compare these factors to 30, we see that all the factors of the smaller group are present inside the larger. This situation produces a polygon, or at least a shape and sound that land on its starting point after one revolution. In another section, we'll be skipping 3 points, which means moving to the 4th point away. The prime factorization of 4 is 2 squared. It shares a factor with the system, but because there's an extra 2, we won't get a nice neat polygon. We'll get a polygram, but because of the shared factor, the star won't use all 30 points. It will produce a pentadecagram. 
hopefully the original question of why are some skipping shapes and others stars, well, hopefully that makes more sense now. For you music people, you've probably been noticing some things as well. You probably have noticed that there's a strict pairing between each point and a musical pitch. You may have noticed that shapes that use the same points produce the same chords. An example would be when I just drew a pentagon, you heard the same chords as when I drew a pentagram earlier. However, the arpeggio, and the arpeggio is a fancy music term for breaking up the chord into individual notes, you'll notice the arpeggio changes depending upon what the shape is and how the points are introduced. Also to note, this composition doesn't use the tempered scale as Western music is used to it. Instead of dividing an octave into 12 equal sized steps, this work breaks it up into 30. That feature has been why the drawings that use all 30 points at once produce chords that are more dense than you're probably used to hearing. This work more than doubles the number of pitches in an octave cluster. However, this doesn't mean that you don't get some sounds with which you are familiar. When we see slash hear a triangle, we are dividing the octave into three equal sized steps, the same musical relationship as when a piano plays an augmented chord. The line segments we heard and saw at the halfway point, by any other names would be a tritone, and when the work has a hexagon, we're hearing a whole tone melody. Those of you with perfect pitch will probably recognize that only a fraction of the pitches are within everyday Western tuning. The lowest note, a middle C, and the whole tone scale that rises from it fall in line with A being 440 hertz. Some other pitches might be close, but they're not exact. So even though some chord relationships may be standard, they're not necessarily going to begin in a standard place.
The next section will have a skipping 29 points in a clockwise manner, but you've probably already anticipated that this movement is the same as not moving at all. We've come full circle, as it were. And with that, we'll close things out. I hope you've enjoyed 30 points. Thank mm -hmm. you.